So it's got your cocaine, uh, opiates, your methamphetamine, cannabis, um, CNS depressants or benzodiazepines, and then a stimulant, which is your amphetamines. This is Sotoxa. Officer Evan Bruckle says he saw it at a Stop DWI convention and pitched it to Irondequoit police. Good morning and good afternoon. It is Saturday, October 5th, 2024. We hope you had a great week this week, and this is your weekly blunt wrap-up of The Blacklist XYZ. I'm your host, Jason Beck, and please remember to smash that like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As well as drop us a comment below of what you think about this week's blunt wrap-up of The Blacklist XYZ. So... Let's get right into it with story number one in this week's blunt wrap up, you guys. That's right. Telegram is back in the news again because Telegram has been sharing user data with authorities since 2018, you guys. In a follow-up post last week following his arrest, Telegram CEO Pavel Durov revealed on Wednesday that Telegram had been disclosing information about criminals to authorities for the past six years, you guys. Pavel Durov said in a statement last week that the new policy does not constitute a, in quotes, major shift in how the platform works and that it had already been sharing with relevant authorities the details of criminals abusing it. In a quote, they say, since 2018, Telegram has been able to disclose IP addresses, phone numbers of criminals to authorities, Durov explained, noting that whenever the platform received a properly formed legal request via relevant communication lines, it would verify it and disclose the IP addresses and phone numbers of any criminal under investigation. Durov re revealed that uh, in Brazil, for example, Telegram had disclosed data for over 200 legal requests since the start of the year, and nearly 7,000 in India over the same period. He also noted that there has been an uptick in the number of, in quotes, valid legal requests in Europe in recent months, suggesting that this could be attributed to the fact that more EU authorities have started to use the correct communication line for such requests. Hmm, interesting. Durov also explained that the recent update to the platform's privacy policy was only meant to streamline and unify it, and stressed that Telegram's core principles have not changed. Durov was uh, charged on 12 counts, including complicity in distributing child porn, drug dealing, and money laundering. The charges stem from the accusation that Telegram's lax moderation rules allow for the widespread misuse of the messenger service, you guys. The CEO made mention that the platform takes down, in quotes, millions of harmful posts and channels every day. That's a lot to take down, but and publishes daily transparency reports about actions taken against the dissemination of illegal content. And this source is from RT News, you guys. Man, oh man, I mean, this should not surprise anyone that Telegram has been doing this. They said that they would be uh, doing this in regards with crime, and I think this is just kind of making up a big deal over nothing just because Telegram has been in the news um, as far as them shifting their policy and whatnot. But, you know, like, of, of course these people are snitching on people. Like, th 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 that's what these platforms, all of these electronic devices, bro, this is, this is all designed to track you, trace you, see what you're doing all the time. So I don't understand why all of y'all feel so safe using them. But Nonetheless, let's see what you guys all have to say about this, you guys. To which the Jungle Boys chimed in on this and said, Cali Plug ain't worried. That is pretty funny, you guys. And the Blacklist XYZ responds to the Jungle Boys and says, Nope, but the people shopping with him should be. Ain't this 
MF or unemployed yet? No, because people don't care about that. They don't care that people are rats or whatnot. They're still dealing with people because they just... I, I'm I'm clueless as to as to the fact of why they do this, but nonetheless, people are still doing. It. I just, I just, ignorance is bliss. I don't know what it is, or people think they're untouchable, or even though they're very touchable. Uh, Eight Stone Eight says, "Why do people choose apps when highly encrypted email servers exist? It's the same type and send shit." I legit want to know: Am I missing something? Eight stone eight, you are not missing anything. These people are just crazy and just lack knowledge, or I, I, I don't know. Maybe you know it's that reverts back to that whole saying back in the day: if common sense was so common. Get right underscore which you says, trust me, if they wanted you, they would have been got you already, and that is a hundred percent right. Because if they want you, they definitely gonna get you without a doubt. And LV Lump Canna says. Where are all the plugs that were talking shit on the original post? The jig is up for you, for all you 1Gs. I wonder what rap song y'all going to play now. Man, well, maybe they're going to sing uh, Locked Up and they won't let me out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Big Bad Nora says, ah, oh, poor internet hustlers. I feel you, bro. These little trapper kids nowadays and know nothing about what's real, what's not. All these internet internet thugs 1776 corbett says is it just ip and phone numbers or do they store chat logs as well well i'll tell you what if they're putting something on the internet just know that there's a record of it somewhere whether or not someone can find it is a totally different question but it's there somewhere uh michael ray nocelli says encryption my ass it has always been a false sense of security. Totally agree with you. We carry a low jack with surveillance wherever we go. Yes, you are correct. And when he's talking about that, he's talking about our cell phones, which we carry everywhere. And probably 99% of you all have your location services on because you can't figure out where you're going and whatnot and need your navigation to get everywhere you go. So, of course, everything is geotagged and everyone, uses, that's your tracker, you, even if you don't even realize it. And homegrown underscore and heady says back to meeting the plug in person. Hey, let's take it back to the 80s, guys. I'm not mad at that. Underscore Costa 909 says, LOL, no legal app can co-op with police. Nothing new. You're so right about that. Legal apps are definitely going to cooperate with law enforcement. And that's just how the game goes. But nonetheless... Moving right along into story number two in this week's blunt wrap-up of the Blacklist XYC, you guys. Al Danta Easterling, 26 of Jacksonville, has pled guilty to conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute over 100 kilograms of marijuana, that's 2,000 pounds, along with possession of a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking crime. Easterling, a member of the Six Block Street Gang, now faces a minimum mandatory sentence of 10 years and up to life in federal prison. A sentencing date has not yet been set, and the plea agreement revealed that Easterling was an armed distributor for a drug trafficking organization, DTO, operating between California and Jacksonville, Florida from October of 2022 through July of 2024. Easterling and his co-conspirators regularly traveled to California to acquire large quantities of marijuana, which they smuggled back to Jacksonville via commercial flights or through the mail. Once in Jacksonville, they sold the drugs from uh, short-term rental properties while routinely carrying firearms to protect their operations and profits, you guys. Federal agents seized more than 1,000 kilograms of marijuana during the investigation, and on May 22, 2024, Easterling was arrested by Jacksonville Sheriff's Office detectives after they found a pound of marijuana in a, and a loaded Glock pistol in his vehicle. This investigation involved multiple law enforcement agencies, including Homeland Security Investigations, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, the FBI, and local sheriff offices. Assistant U.S. Attorneys uh, Akash Singh and Kerwin Mike are prosecuting the case as part of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, better known as OCDETF initiative. 
The OCDETF targets high-level drug traffickers and criminal organizations using coordinated multi-agency approach. The source of this is Fox 30 Florida, you guys. Man, oh man, oh man, these guys. I, I find it interesting that how they're, they're trying to say that they got, they got caught with a Glock and one pound of weed, but they are referencing that they seized thousands of pounds of cannabis. So that must mean that over the course of that time, they intercepted a number of boxes. You know, that's going to be, what, 200 boxes if they seized, uh, seized a couple thousand pounds. So, you know, let's... That's that's a lot of boxes to seize. You would think if you sent that many boxes and they didn't make it, you would figure out another way of transportation or something or something like that. But nonetheless, I guess, you know, old habits die hard and, you know, keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Speaking of rolling, 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 we're going to roll right into your comments in regards with this story. Oh, one other thing I did want to point out to this is that gun, one of the reasons he could have got the 10 years is we don't know if that gun was a, a dirty gun. We don't know how many uh, other homicides were already, or if there were any homicides on that gun whatsoever. But that is something that definitely could have been attributed to that 10-year sentence. I know a lot of you in the chat uh, were, were confused as to why they got 10 years for just a pound, when that is actually not the case at all. But nonetheless, underscore I'm peasy says big L for the spray pack scene. That's that's funny. That's funny. Reggie three one three six says was they using Telegram? That's very funny, especially because of our last story. That could have very well could have been how they got caught up. Mac underscore mean says uh it's only weed, not cocaine or fentanyl. They shouldn't be facing ten years to life. That's insane. Well, I think I meant the reason they're facing that 10 years, like I previously stated, is because of that gun charge, not necessarily the uh, the, the the weed. But who knows? Seven Trey Zero says Fed case for a few boxes is wild. I wouldn't say it's a few boxes. It's, you know, 10 to 20 boxes. This is why gang is straight up for the birds. Sentence enhancement for absolutely nothing. You are right about that. Gang enhancements do uh, allow law enforcement to be able to uh, add additional time onto uh, mandatory minimum sentences and whatnot. So that is that is something that is very true, and you do not want to get wrapped up in a gang enhancement because that is going to just cause you all types of problems. Southern.smoke.atl says, Duval County, Florida is adult swim in real life. Hmm, <laughs> Eligata562 says they're about to snitch. Watch. I totally agree with you. And if ju judging by the amount of people that's in this picture, there's definitely going to be at least one snitch. I'll put money on that. That is for sure. That's way too many people to get caught up for not no one to be snitching. Sacred Sun Farms 2 says lock up the weed dealers. Let the violent criminals walk. America. I know it's, it's crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, Moab Genetics says the guy in the middle forgot his mask. Cute observation. And uh, CEO 1.93 says, Second Amendment, better know your rights. Fair enough, but that could have been a dirty gun. We don't know if that was actually registered to him or not. I'm willing to bet it wasn't since they're charging him with it. But nonetheless, we don't know that information as of yet. And Dylan underscore Green Wave Med says, They ashy. <laughs> Man. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, you guys. And rolling along into our third story of the day in this week's blunt wrap-up of The Blacklist XYZ. We have this video for you to play. It was just before 2 a.m. when East L.A. Sheriff's deputies got a call about a person who was shot. When they showed up, they found a male security guard suffering from a gunshot wound. That victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, about 15 minutes away in the city of Whittier, there was a dispensary robbery that took place about half an hour before this incident was reported here in East L.A. Right now, it's unclear if these two incidents are somehow connected. But as we do come back out here live, a lot of questions, right, as far as uh, the motive, what led up to the shooting and a uh, suspect info. These are all still things we're working to get answers for. Hopefully we'll have an update for you coming up in the six o'clock hour. 
A security guard was shot and killed during a robbery attempt at a 24-hour marijuana dispensary in East Los Angeles. And a search was underway for the suspects on Monday, you guys. The incident happened just before 2 a.m. on Whittier Boulevard, according to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, you guys. This is super, super sad, so we're sorry, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the family um, that, that lost their lives in, in this tragedy. Uh, that's when two men entered and tried to rob the store. At some point, a shooting occurred, and the security guard was struck by gunfire, investigators said. When uh, deputies arrived, they found the unidentified victim had been shot in the chest. He was pronounced dead at the scene, you guys. Another employee inside the dispensary at the, at the time of the shooting was not injured, however. It is unclear if anything was stolen, but authorities say the suspects fled the scene in a dark-colored SUV, and no arrests have been made. Well, that's probably because it's in Los Angeles. And uh, meanwhile, another dispensary in Whittier was robbed about half an hour before the East L.A. incident. I'd be willing to bet that it's the same group of people, but, you know, mm, we shall see. The Sheriff's Department said several mass suspects held the store clerk at gunpoint, smashed display cases before they fled with merchandise and cash in a white Tesla, you guys. Sounds like a stolen vehicle to me. But, man, oh, man, oh, man, this is, this is super, super sad. Um, our, our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to, uh, to, to the family of this loss, uh, the family that, that lost this victim. It's super, super sad when, you know, I mean, it, it is a trap shop. And so, like, that you are putting yourself in these types of situations. Um, and it's just really just sad to see that the people don't value people's life. Um, and they're just so quick to so quick to shoot over nothing like this. Probably even probably was just a whole bunch of boof weed. I'm pretty sure it wasn't like they, they didn't steal, you know, thousands of boxes of peas like they're robbing a dispensary. So like, what are they going to get? Maybe like five pounds run up out of there with. And it's just it's just a sad, sad, sad state of affairs uh, that th that the world is in. And then, you know, you also have the DAs in uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement's kind of hands are tied because these DAs in the in all of our big cities aren't prosecuting crime. And just like they haven't even caught these guys, or they're probably not even going to try to because it's not even a legal store. They don't even go after the people that rob the legal stores. It makes you think they're going to go after the people that rob the illegal ones. But nonetheless, let's hear what you guys had to say about this. Murphy's underscore Ridge said prayers go out to the family. Couldn't agree with you more, Murphy's Ridge. Much, much prayers out to this this family that lost lost their life. It's super sad. Hey, but in Amashta says, who's got a 24-hour dispensary? Exactly. That's one way you should know it's an illegal shop. Totally right. Totally right. True Hay says, dude shot was making 16 an hour. Don't work at these places for chump change. Now, I'm not sure if he was making 16 bucks an hour or not. Uh, we did see a couple other different people saying different hourly rates. But nonetheless, I'm willing to bet that this guy was not paid at a high value. But I will say that if you are going to work in a trap shop, you need to make sure that you are getting paid well for the time that you are in there. Um, because the risks that you are putting yourself in uh, are, are much much higher and greater uh, elevated of something possibly happening to you or harm coming to you um, in, in a trap shop as opposed to a legal shop. That's just that's just reality. Mr. Nice Guy. NYC. Ca says, trying to tell y'all if you ain't been doing this when it was illegal then don't try doing it now because it's a dog eat dog business. And if you're not built like that, you're going to learn the hard way. Go get a job or a different career because this ain't for everybody. Totally agree with you on that, uh, Mr. Nice Guy NYC. Magic underscore Mountain underscore Mike says, seems like since legalizing cannabis, crime, environmental damage, illegal grows have skyrocketed. I don't think any of this stuff has actually skyrocketed. If anything, if you look at the statistics, all this stuff has gone down. The problem is, is that they've made these uh, these situations uh, not as uh, punishable by the sentencing guidelines that you can get sentenced for. And so you hear a lot more news about it also, too, with the, you know, as cannabis has grown. But 
nonetheless, nonetheless, I, I totally disagree with that. But I, you do hear about it more in the media. That that part is true. Underscore SM eight ish smash ish maybe. Main reason we need to shut down trap shops. I mean, I feel you. I feel you on that. They they do present a public nuisance. That is for sure. I dot like dot cool underscore thing says that's effed up, man. I'm running my shop right now out here in Oklahoma. You got to stay strapped, man. For real, for real. I mean, Oklahoma does have the best gun laws when it comes to cannabis in the entire country. So uh, not not mad at that whatsoever. And uh, Ramon Garcia 360 says Cali regulations make all legal dispensaries cut off sales at 10 p.m. This over tree sad. So, so right. That is, and that's one way to tell if you're in a legal dispensary is if they close at 10 p.m. or not. And uh, Dougal Blaze says, with geofencing, they should be able to catch these guys pretty quickly. They just choose not to. Ask yourself why. You would think that it would be pretty easy. I, I, I agree with that, like with the technology nowadays, but who, who knows? I mean, I, so, something tells me they could and other, other things tell me that they couldn't. I'm, 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 I'm undecided at this point. And Russ Mac dot nerd funk says always for weed, never for anything of actual value. Bunch of broke stoners Man, so true. It's, and it's so sad, so sad that people don't value life like that. And couldn't, couldn't agree with you more. Could not agree with you more. And moving right along into our fourth and final story of the day in this week's blunt wrap up of the blacklist XYZ. We have this video to play for you. So it's got your cocaine, uh, opiates, your methamphetamine, cannabis, um, CNS depressants or benzodiazepines, and then a stimulant, which is your amphetamines. This is Sotoxa. Officer Evan Bruckel says he saw it at a Stop DWI convention and pitched it to Irondequoit police. Obviously, with the legalization of cannabis, we're starting to see an increase of um, drivers driving under the influence of not only cannabis, but other drugs and a mixture of cannabis and alcohol. Officers can just take a small saliva sample, run it through the machine, and wait about five minutes. It's, it's not a, an end-all, be-all. This isn't a device where we're just sticking it in somebody's mouth at the beginning of the, when we stop them and say, oh, he's... He's positive for cannabis. We're going to arrest him. Western New York police began using roadside technology to test for impaired drivers. The Iron Dekit Police Department is the first law enforcement agency in Monroe County to use Sotoxa, a mobile device that can be used to detect cannabis and other drugs on the side of the road, you guys. In a quote, with the legalization of cannabis, we're starting to see an increase of drivers driving under the influence of not only cannabis, but other drugs and a mixture of cannabis and alcohol. The source of this is ABC 13 New York, you guys. Well, you know, first of all, I think that's a little bit of gaslighting right there because I don't think that drugged driving in regards with cannabis has gone up. OK, what has gone up is the fact that you guys are asking about cannabis now um, when you are pulling people over and whatnot. And back in the day, you wouldn't even ask those kinds of questions because it's just it's just crazy, especially with people with alcohol. You never ask them if they had smoked cannabis. You just be like, oh, they're drunk and they're going to jail and boom, that's what they're going to jail for. So it's kind of I, I, I don't buy a lot of this, but I'm interested in how this sal saliva test actually works, because as you see in the video, he sticks the little swab in his mouth. And I just wonder how long, uh, you know, we all know that cannabis stays in your system once you smoke it for over 30 days. Um, but I'm not sure how how this is actually working with you by pulling from your saliva because the cannabis is stored in your fat cells. So I'm a little interested to, to, to learn a little bit more about this Sotoxa, but I do find it interesting that it tests for all of these other different drugs, which is that this is the first time that I've seen like an all in one kind of kit for that, which I'm pretty sure that we'll see more and more uh, law enforcement agencies using this type of technology and whatnot in, in the coming years. But this is, you know, this is just a side of what's more to come. And, you know, that's even more the reason we need sensible regulation. But I don't think that cannabis usage and driving is such a hysteria that the media wants you to believe. But nonetheless, who 
you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Let's let's see what you guys had to say about this. The circus farmer says the irony is conservatives will praise this overreach of government. I agree with you, bro. It's unfortunate. And, you know, a lot of rhinos will do that. And it is a far reach over of government. I, I, I feel you on that. I definitely feel you on that. Puzzle Pie CEO Co. Official says, seems real strict for a place whose mayor does a lot of crime. Interesting, interesting. If so, this kind of the pot calling the kettle black. Hmm. Polo Boys One says, okay, Officer Lisper. Cute, cute. Nick Dez says, this guy is a lifetime virgin. Oh boy, oh boy. I know. I thought it was kind of interesting that how he found this product at a trade show and then pitched it to police. I, I feel like there's something fishy within that story too, but nonetheless. Toad Venom says, uh, make one to test cops for roids and performance enhancing drugs. Interesting, interesting. Bleached underscore plantain says, you can't ever test how long someone smoked. That ex I totally agree with you, bro. I totally agree with you. You know, because this is testing for the substance. It's not text testing for intoxication. I'm, I'm totally with you on this. I think it's going to be able to be challenged a lot uh, legally in a court of law. But uh, Scare, Scare DG Play says, uh, can make all the arrests they want. That shit won't hold up in court. Mm, interesting. Blood tests barely do. Never consent to a sobriety test. Let them arrest you and take them to court. I always agree in fighting and making sure that you're standing up for your rights. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, straight Chris JPG says, uh, it can't work. Cannabis metabolites can be in blood and urine for literal days. Won't hold up in court. Get a good lawyer and stay away from whatever town this is. I agree. That's great advice right there. Straight Chris. Three underscore mustache says his voice tells us why he's a cop. LOL. He does kind of have one of those cop voices, though. I feel you. And Vinny Winning says, anything that tests for presence rather than concentration shouldn't be used for THC. You hit the nail on the head with that comment right there. Vinny Winning, and you are winning, Vinny. I see how you did right there. Thank you all for tuning in to this week's weekend episode of the Blunt Wrap-Up of the Blacklist XYZ. I'm your host, Jason Beck, and make sure to tune in to High at Nine News every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific in high noon on the East Coast for America's number one daily cannabis news show, High at Nine News, as well as continue to comment on all of the posts, the Blacklist XYZ and the Blacklist post throughout the week for your chance to be featured on next week's blunt wrap-up of the Blacklist XYZ. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone, and don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as well as drop a comment down below on what you think about this weekend's blunt wrap-up of the Blacklist XYZ, brought to you by Hyatt 9 News and Cloud Media Partners. Have yourself an amazing and safe weekend, everyone.